a steel spine sea urchin, crows made from resin and fiberglass, a sleeping tiger that through iterations travels landscapes and alongside other forms of life, creatures, forests. These constitute the worlds of the late artist Bree Johnson's practice. In her works, we see glimpses of life worlds forming one decision at a time. Johnson's works for the exhibition are studies and sketches, incipient gestures grasping at forms transforming as they are fleshed out. In them, we see an artistic intelligence continually annotating and calibrating a range of aesthetic effects through form and process. This is best played out by a series of studies of a tiger lying flat on its side. In a pencil sketch, we see the animal facing its viewers, a suggestion of a landscape of ferns in the background. In another, the tiger asleep, its entire body towards us, an arid land painted blue, a vulture in the vicinity, a creature's carcass. Another sketch is more detailed, a white tiger with its back against us, immersed in a body of water, against the dreary swamp, in the midst of bare trees, the tiger's luminescent body under a bright full moon. The iterations track a formative imagination, as if in each study a world slowly opens up and the artist invites us for a peek. In the final work, we see the same swamp, but this time the murky waters azure and the gray skies sky blue. The lonesome white tiger in the initial studies is joined by two other tigers. The white tiger gleams in its slumber, the other tiger seemingly blending into the water. Composition in Johnson's wielding becomes composure, a self-possession, an assurance that the world as she sees and portrays it discloses singularity. The singularity plays out in wilderness, flora and fauna. In her studies, the relationship between prey and predator is fraught and tense, a choreographic rendering of imminent threat or death. This composure also allows the artist to depict the world sensitive to the conditions of its nourishment from the life that wanders in it. In one of the sketchbook paintings, a leopard bites a deer's back. The deer's neck is gracefully arched while another leopard tears at its throat. A panther bears its teeth to a rabbit taking refuge from pillars of trees. In a separate work, the rabbit surviving, skin torn exposing flesh, claw marks, a beached killer whale. In another work, a skulk of foxes. In the foreground is a larger, much older fox, a small creature limp and lifeless caught in its teeth. A rowdy bunch of smaller foxes is seen in the background. Both have buried their heads into a field of dense snow. Nearby, a smaller fox sits still, eyes fixed on the older fox's bounty, sneakily waiting for an opportunity to pounce. Composure is compelling presence. A murder of crows in their blue bodies welcome viewers in Johnson's space. The slick sheen on the fiberglass animals make them luminous, while the bodies of the earlier resin birds are more textured, rough around the edges. The menacing metal urchins, in a particular slant of afternoon light, are softened. Shadows of the trees outside stream through the museum's glass walls. Dappled light hits the harsh spikes and tempers the danger. At once, the urchin is a flower.